Hey guys, my name's Alistair. I'm a world builder and game developer. I'm making this video series to show you guys a bit about Unreal Engine and uh, what it can do. It's incredibly powerful and it's probably one of the most interesting tools out there at the moment. It's really changing the way we make games and make spaces and it's uh, starting to get used quite widely across other industries as well. So I've designed a house. We're going to build it out over the next few episodes. And during that process, we're going to really get thinking about design as well as a little bit of kind of interesting 3D uh, technique inside Unreal Engine. We're going to keep it pretty high level, so not go too, too much into uh, the modeling detail. But if you guys want to know more about anything that you see, leave a comment and we can get to it in a future video. So for this episode, we're going to start framing out the house and we're going to start really thinking about the design and start building out the kind of base components. And then in future episodes, we can start adding a bit more detail. By the end of this series, I really want to start getting into a point where we can explore it in virtual reality as well and also really get a good sense of immersion from the level when we're inside it. I'm hoping you'll learn a thing or two, but also just find it interesting and entertaining. So let's begin. So we are going to start at uh, the beginning for the concept of this project. So all across the UK, there are these uh, incredible rolling hills, most of which are fields, and they are almost always beautiful and they almost always have a great view. Now, for about a hundred reasons, you can't usually build a house there. It's almost impossible legally and you're going to annoy the neighbours even if you get through somehow. So that's basically where I kind of started off with this project. I wanted to build a house that was hard to see from the outside, but had a really great view from the inside. Kind of like a stealth house hidden inside the landscape. You know, that you might just see kind of a small strip of windows from across the field or something, but uh, not much more. I'm going to treat this uh, more like a video game level than an architecture project. Uh, where We're just kind of going with this house as a nice way to get you guys thinking about design and interesting environments. And also it should be a nice kind of enclosed project that we can really focus on without having to worry too much about, you know, expanding levels and expanding scopes. By the end of the project, I really want to get inside virtual reality as well so that we can actually kind of feel what it would be like to be inside this kind of space and start exploring what kind of gameplay we could put inside as well. If you are doing this for architectural visualization, great. I mean, it's a pretty overlapping workflow in a lot of places and there's a bunch to learn there as well. So I almost always start my projects with uh, a few sketches on pen and paper just by hand, but uh, I like to very quickly start moving into 3D and start sketching in 3D to actually see the geometry and the proportions of what we're going to be making. What you've uh, been seeing me do on the screen is just start uh, taking some of those early sketches and working out a bit of a floor plan, starting to figure out you know, exactly what kind of spaces I want inside the house and making a very, very blocky, very simple uh, white box kit that we can quickly get inside Unreal Engine, you know, for some instant feedback to see if we're going in the right direction or not. So what you're looking at here is a very basic white box using basic blocky masses that kind of gives us an idea of the kind of house that we want. This is a couple of hours work, really. And what we've got is a lovely great big living space out the front, some main entrance stairs that take you through the hill out the back and some nice bedrooms off to the right. What we're going to do now is very quickly get it inside our Unreal Engine to see if we like it. So save a copy of the file and then basically delete anything you don't need and just select everything. We're going to give this a UVW unwrap like so. And we're going to click flatten custom with uh, nothing particular selected. Now, this may be looking weird, but bear with me. We're going to export this over into an FBX. There we are, and that's it from the 3ds Max side. Now, over inside Unreal Engine, you're just going to make, want to make a new folder, call it whatever you want, it doesn't matter, this is just for a white box, and import that model we just uh, made. Very quickly check uh, Generate Light Maps there, and that's it, just uh, import it right in. You should get it all as a, you know, all the various pieces, it doesn't need to be combined at this stage. And we're going to drag it in, it'll take just a second. Now put on the material anything you want. And that's it. We've got the model in very, very quickly. Now just click build lighting once you've got some collision on anything that you need. And uh, that should be a really fast way of uh, 
getting your white boxing into Unreal Engine just so that you can see, you know, whether or not you like it. You could build the entire thing in UE4 if you want, but getting to do this inside 3ds Max let us set out the kind of geometry we wanted for modular parts in the future. That's why I do it in Max instead of UE4. There we are. Lighting's built. That was really fast. Now after a small amount of tweaking, we're going to hop inside to virtual reality and we're going to start exploring to see if we like the space or not. So we're going to start in the outdoor area. I've carved a uh, pool out of the hill that lets you feel like you're really outside and not kind of, you know, underground. And uh, from what I recall, being inside virtual reality, yeah, the proportions were about right. The pool was maybe a little bit short, but uh, overall it was okay. Now we're going to carry on through. This is the main living space. We're going to combine the uh, kitchen, the dining area and uh, the living area, which we've kind of sunk down a little bit. And uh, just out the back here, this is going to be, uh, you know, what uh, basically some support spaces, things like, uh, you know, laundry, utilities, etc. I wanted this room here to be an office and you can see out the back I've carved, uh, you know, a kind of cutout in the hill that's going to bring some light into the back of the house so we don't just have one frontage. And again, the size was about right. Uh, I've built this all on, you know, a two meter by two meter grid. Uh, so it's, you know, really kind of straightforward to work with and it means that all the parts we make can be used in multiple places. So let's uh, move on through some of the rest of the house. You can see here, this would be the stairs coming down from the hill, kind of taking you in. And it's, uh, it's pretty dark at the moment. Yeah, I don't think I'm convinced from what I remember. I think that area needed some work. I quite like the living area though, being sunk down a tiny bit, that was quite nice. The way at the moment you reach the uh, bedrooms is through this corridor that kind of separates you off from the rest of the house. And again, it was a bit dark. I think the uh, spare bedrooms having a uh, frontage that faces out the back is fine personally, especially if you kind of plant up that wall, I think that'll be fine. But this area of the house is way too dark, so we're going to have to do something about that. And this would be the master bedroom in a house situation or, you know, just another room if this was a level. Um, and again, you know, it's got frontages out the front and back or wi windows out the front and back. This will be a really nice kind of space. And, you know, you can tell all kinds of stories here or uh, build, build out some really good levels. And again, you know, just as a piece of design, I think it would work really interestingly. So this should be quite cool to explore in virtual reality when we get that far. But yeah, for a first VR pass, this was... This wasn't bad. I think I like it, but it needs a bit of work. Let's uh, let's move on forward with some more modeling and start refining some things and fixing some things. So my uh, next task was to start turning the white box into a set of modular parts that we can start sketching throughout the level. They're uh, fairly low poly, but they are proper pieces of architecture now, not just boxes. So I've rounded off edges, I've uh, built out doors and details, I've built out cornices and skirtings out the top and some arches. And uh, it's now starting to kind of, you know, cross the threshold from being a very simple white box into being a set of parts that will eventually become an environment kit. I've done so far most of the house on the inside in a modular way so that all the pieces can be used in different situations and you can make a variety of rooms both inside this level and outside. And then beyond that, I've started to, uh, you know, do a very kind of custom set of modeling for the outside because I wanted it to be quite special and have quite a lot of detail. I didn't uh, model and design everything at the same time. It kind of all happened in a sequence where I'd focus on some bits and then return to others and flesh them out to the same level of detail. You can see here, this is for the back area where we've cut out some of the earth to bring a bit more light into the back of the house. And uh, for this area, we did some custom texturing. For most of the house, we're using tiled textures, both for memory, for performance, and also just because it's, uh, it's fast and it's good these days. But for a few assets, we did want to do some custom texturing to really kind of get that sense of dirt and grime, especially on the exterior assets. So you can see here, we're layering up dirt after having baked up all the maps. Um, we're just basically doing, uh, you know, a nice dirty concrete that will uh, later have plants in it. Should look pretty good. So for a lot of the areas that we're using tiled textures, in the exterior especially, I wanted them to look uh, really realistic, more than you typically get with tile textures. And I didn't want to use vertex painting because it would really increase the uh, poly count for all the meshes. So I messed around with painting custom dirt on a lot of the exterior parts in a third UV channel. So you have three usually, one for the texture tiling, one for the light mapping, and now for a lot of the assets, we've got a third. And what that lets us do is basically lay over dirt inside our real engine to, you know, get a really nice sense of uh, 
weatheredness for all of our parts like they've been rained on and worn down over the years. And with that done, we are in a pretty good place to start bringing things into Unreal Engine. We've got a nice model now, the exterior is pretty well detailed, and the interior is full of great modular parts that we can start to really frame out a uh, nice sense of space. You can see inside there I've replaced a lot of the original blocky parts with fairly detailed architectural meshes of doors, ceilings, columns, beams. And if you guys want to know anything more about the detailed modeling of them, again, ask in the comments and we can do it in a future video. I've really opened up the top there where we had that dark cave entrance and it now brings a lot of light down into the space, which is really what this house is all about. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty good framework to begin with. So from here, we're going to start putting things into Unreal Engine. Typically, I bring things in piece by piece to make sure they're all working well. And then I'll do a detailed build, which we are going to do now. Cool. Well, that was about a, an hour's worth of assembly or so. I'd, I'd prototyped out the uh, level a couple of times in Unreal before, you know, not necessarily combining all the parts, but just making sure that they worked okay with the lighting, 
But uh, I tend to, I like to do a fresh build with everything so I've got a kind of final level of control and polish and I know things are going to be production ready. You can see me now just uh, starting to adjust a bit of lighting for a quick light build, which uh, we should go for any second. There we go. Really just a very fast one and uh, on first glance it's, it's a little dark inside but we can fix that up with uh, you know, some tweaks to the lighting setup. I think though that overall when you come outside and you look at the house from you know, our placeholder hill, it looks alright. It is a strip in the landscape and I think that's a good starting point. Now obviously in the uh, videos to come we're really going to push this forward, we're going to get the landscape working, we're going to start looking at some furniture for the house and some lighting and I think there are some materials that we're going to have to tweak and some uh, s some of the uh, design elements I think we could make another pass on but this is starting to look pretty fun and I'm, I'm getting pretty excited. But uh, yeah for now let's jump inside virtual reality again and uh, see how things have improved. So we've started at the top of the house. I wanted to come in how you'd come in in the real world or in the game world and start at the entrance at the top of the landscape and then kind of move on down into the actual house. The landscape obviously needs work, but I think the architecture's working quite well here. Uh, I think the uh, opened up entrance area, you know, which now has a lot more light, I'm really happy with. It still gives you that great sense of compression down into the landscape, but now it brings a lot of light with it and you you really kind of you know feel like you're going on a, a journey leaving the open sky and then coming down into the house as soon as you get in the view is recontextualized out inside the uh, living area and i think i think that's really nice not entirely happy with that concrete but we can play with that i might try and make it a bit more sci-fi i uh, yeah i think this living area is on paper it's really big um for real life houses but it's not larger than life it actually feels quite controlled and i was really happy with that a lot of the time in game design you have to make the spaces bigger than you would in the real world to fit gameplay elements whether it's third person characters and faraway cameras or whether it's uh, you know just a kind of sense of scale and movement but in vr you can get away with doing it one to one and it's actually really nice to kind of see how that would work and uh, you know feel an accurate sense of space if i was doing this for another type of game just scale the whole thing up a little bit you'd be fine um, I think this front area and the pool area works quite nicely. I might tweak the dirt a tiny bit, but uh, the scale of it is is really nice. Uh, the pool itself looks great. It's it's a great scale. It's plenty deep. And uh, yeah, I think it's a nice exterior space. Remember, you're still inside a hill at this point, but it feels really open. And that's, that's what I'm up for. You know, a house that's hidden, but doesn't feel like a bunker. These doors, I got the proportions wrong and I'm not completely sold on the design as you can see there. I think I'm going to make another pass at those at some point, but I think this office in general is a, a nice scale. I think it's uh, bringing plenty of light into the space and uh, yeah, it's, it's a good start. Now let's move on to the living areas, the uh, bedroom areas. Oh, yup. So when I first tried this out in VR, I was so happy with the uh, way I'd done the concrete. It was a fairly polished concrete and I had used that same dirt baking process to paint out some imperfections, especially around where the walls touch the floor. And it came out really nicely. I was really happy with it. This bathroom isn't as big as I thought it would be. I'm learning that a lot in this project is, you know, you really need to kind of think hard about your scales. Uh, I, I seem to discover this every time I do a project, but it's such an important lesson is to really think about how big a space is in relation to your character or the person that's going to be using the space. Um, those ceiling panels there, I like them more in VR than I did in the real world. Oh, okay, yep, I remember this space being really, really nice to enter. It, it brought a lot of light back in, you know, after a slightly darker corridor which was lovely and I think the view is going to be fantastic when we do a bit of landscaping. Uh, as, a, as a bedroom, it's huge and it's uh, it's got a lot of potential. As a space for game design and gameplay, again, it's it's plenty big. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. Same for the bathroom, brings plenty of light in and uh, yeah, it should be, should be pretty good. So far, my favourite part of this project has been this little corridor here. Just the way it brings light into an otherwise dark space, I was I was quite happy with that. It's no longer too dark, it's now a kind of controlled darkness which can contrast the brightness of the rest of the house. And uh, yeah, I think that's a great first pass. I think there's uh, you know, plenty we can still do, which we'll do in future episodes, but yeah, this, is, this has been a good little trip into VR. Right, well, that was the first episode. I've enjoyed this process so much so far. 
I love designing uh, interesting interior spaces and uh, it's, it's been a really great uh, challenge to kind of get a good sense of scale uh, and a good kind of, you know, uh, sense of lighting. I've enjoyed the design challenge and I've enjoyed the brief so far. But uh, there is a lot to go, I reckon, as I say. I want to make this house quite sci-fi, so it's it's not going to be overly realistic. I want a lot of kind of glowing neon and interesting furniture. And I think when we start bringing in that kind of level of detail, it's going to get quite interesting. Obviously, there's still a lot to do and a lot to patch up. But uh, this, has been, this has been an enjoyable process so far. And I've also really enjoyed making the video. It's been an experiment um, in finding a good way to kind of share uh, world building with you guys. Anything you liked and you thought works, let me know. Anything you'd like to see kind of tweaked and adjusted, you know, leave a comment as well. This is an experiment and it's a process of kind of figuring out a nice way to share this all with you guys. So please do let me know what you thought worked. Um, beyond that, anything you want to know in detail from modeling to design to technique, ask in the comments as well. And, uh, you know, I'll see what I can do to kind of help explain a bit more of it to you. And in the next episode, we'll start pushing on. I think we can start getting into a bit more detail and a bit more kind of character coming out of this design, which will be really exciting. But for now, thanks very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe. I'll get more out soon. And uh, if you want to know anything else, just, just leave a message. Thanks a lot. See you now.